I'd like to just recap, if I might, the schedule that you discussed with us indicated that for the months of July, August, and September, during those three months, there would be uh, 29 shows, and then there was a break for the months of October, November, and December. Is that accurate? Yes. And then the concerts would resume in January, February, and March for 23 additional shows, correct? Yes. So the total number of tours, based on this map, is 52, and they were divided up with a three-month break between each half. Is that accurate? Yes. Now, Mr. Gongaware, I'd like to return Ms. briefly. Excuse me, Miss. Um, my recollection is it was a total of 50 shows. Your Honor, may I approach with exhibit number three? Mr. Gongaware, my math might be inaccurate, and if so, I apologize. Let's just go through the dates of the performances scheduled again. The total number in July? Eight. No, That's excuse me, one, two, three. Yeah, eight. Eight in July? Mm hmm That's my math mistake then. I had written down 10. So that would total 50. Yes, ma'am. Eight in July, 10 in August, nine in September, 10 in January, 10 in February, and three in March. Okay, yes. And after the March performances concluded, were there plans to add additional venues and additional performances? Yes, uh, but just plans. I understand. Thank you for clarifying that for me, Mr. Gongaware. Returning now to the month of June, you testified yesterday that you were present at a meeting in early June concerning Mr. Jackson's stamina and readiness, correct? Yes. Were you also aware of another meeting concerning Mr. Jackson's health on June 20th of 2009? I was aware of it, but I didn't attend. Mr. Gongaware, did you ever see Conrad Murray at any of the rehearsals that you attended? Yes. Can you give me the location of the rehearsal where you saw Dr. Murray? Well, he was at the forum. And relative to that early June meeting at Carrollwood that you attended and had the discussion about Mr. Jackson's stamina, was your observation of Dr. Murray at the forum rehearsal before that early June meeting or after? Really, it was after. Did you see Conrad Murray at any other rehearsals where Mr. Jackson was performing? No. Turning now to Wednesday, June 23, 2009, Mr. Gongaware, did you see Mr. Jackson rehearse on that date? Yes. What was your overall impression of Mr. Jackson's performance at rehearsal on June 23, 2009? I thought he was strong. Did Mr. Jackson appear to be excited and full of energy when he was performing? Yes, yes he did. Did you also see Mr. Jackson perform at his last rehearsal on June 24, 2009 at Staples? Yes. What was your impression or opinion of Mr. Jackson's performance on his last rehearsal date? He was fully engaged. Did he seem excited and have energy and perform well? You know, I didn't spend that much time at that rehearsal. I was busy with other things. Was it your impression that the rehearsal was a good rehearsal? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Gongaware. Ms. Brazil, thank you. Cross-examination. Turn off? Yes, Judge. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Gongaware. How are you? Good. It's good to see you again. Thank you. We spoke a couple days ago, in fact. Is that right? That's right. I want to go into your, your, for lack of a better term, history with Michael Jackson. You, you said that you were on the Dangerous Tour. You were a part of the Dangerous Tour. Yes. 
Could you, could you be more specific about what your role was on that tour? I was the tour manager on that tour. Okay, and what did the tour manager do? Uh, logistics, travel, that sort of thing. All right. did, did you have contact with Michael Jackson during that period of time? Not much. Right. Did you spoke to him on occasion? On occasion, yes. All right. uh, you also said that your next tour with Michael Jackson was the history tour. That's Is right. that right? Yes. And what was your role in that tour? That tour was in two legs. On the first leg, I worked for uh, the worldwide promoter, Marcel Abram. And on the second leg, I was the tour executive. And the reason for the change in, in, the, in the job on the second tour was, uh, second leg was why? Objection relevance. I'll overview the objection within 352. You may answer it. So again, the question, The reason sir? you changed job in the second leg of the tour. Um, that's the job that they needed me for. Uh, was, it a, was it a promotion? Or was it just a different job? Uh, well, there were, there were some problems on the tour, financial problems, and I was brought in to straighten them out. During that period of time, did you have occasion to interact with Michael Jackson? Yes. Uh, on, on many occasions? Yes. You spoke to him quite a bit? Especially in the second half of it, yes. Okay. You, um, when were you asked to, uh, to uh, uh, handle the production on the This Is It series of shows? Um, right from the start. Right from the start. And you yeah. currently are employed by whom? AEG Live. Okay. And how long have you been employed by AEG Live? Uh, 11, 12 years. You recall during the Dangerous Tour and the History Tour that Kenny Ortega was also involved? Yes. Okay. Now, Ms. Gongaware, when you were asked to take over um, the production, did you have any reservations about that? Objection. Relevance. Sustained. 350. One, 352. Of the, one of the questions that was asked of you by the prosecution was, was that on one occasion you saw that Michael Jackson looked a little intoxicated, a little out of it, glassy-eyed. Objection to the state's testimony. I think you're going to have to refine the time frame. Sustained. You said that one time you saw Michael Jackson and he looked a little intoxicated. Is that that's, fair? That's not the word I use, sir. What word did you use? Uh, I don't recall the word I used, but what I saw was just a, a little bit of a, a, a slower speech pattern, just a slight a slur in his speech. And, and you also testified that you found out that at that time that Michael Jackson had just come from Dr. Klein's office. That's correct. Now, you were certainly on the lookout for any drug use by Michael Jackson, were you? Yes, I was. And in fact, you were, had reservations about about handling the production if you observe drug use. That's right. That was one of the concerns that you had. Yes. Did you ever address issues with Dr. Klein with anyone at AEG? Objection, relevance. Sustained. 352 as well. In the meetings that you had in June, first week of June, and the second meeting that you were not attended at, was one of the topics to discuss Dr. Arnold Klein? Objection, relevance. Sustained. Let me ask you this specific question. Did you ever tell Dr. Murray anything about Dr. Klein? Objection, relevance. Overruled. No. When, uh, when you did have interaction with Dr. Murray, you observed that he was concerned about Michael Jackson. Yes. And he wanted to do what was best for Michael Jackson. That was my impression, yes. Was it your impression that Dr. Murray treated Michael Jackson as a friend? They were friends? Uh, I didn't have an opinion of that. Uh, were you friends with Michael Jackson? Would you consider your relationship a friend relationship? It was a business relationship, but it was very friendly. Uh, how, when you wanted to get hold of Michael Jackson, how would you do that? If he was at rehearsals, I'd just go see him. All right, and otherwise? If I, if I needed to talk to him, I would talk to his assistant, uh, Michael Lemire Williams, and he would set it up. He would set it up by getting hold of Michael or scheduling a time for you to talk to him? Yes. The meeting that was scheduled uh, that you attended in early June of 2009, um, you, were, you have testified that some of the topics that were involved there 
But that meeting was actually pushed by Kenny Ortega, wasn't it? Kenny was the one who asked for the meeting, yes. And Kenny's concerns were that at the time, uh, Michael Jackson was missing rehearsal. That was one of his concerns. Yes. Uh, did anybody ever get to the bottom of why Michael Jackson was missing rehearsals? Objection big. Sustained. Well, did, did, was that a topic of conversation at the, at the early June meeting at Carrollwood? I, I don't recall that. I think the early June meeting was just was a positive meeting, and Michael was very positive about it. Who was at that early June meeting? Um, Michael, Dr. Murray, Frank DeLeo, Randy Phillips, myself. Do you recall at that meeting there was a discussion about Michael Jackson's schedule? I don't specifically recall that. Do you recall that there was a conversation uh, by Dr. Murray about Michael Jackson needing to spend more time with his children? Do you remember that? Not specifically. One moment, please. I'm trying to find something that may have fallen off a, a location. And on the overhead, yeah, one of the jurors is bringing that towards It can get very distracting. Yeah, disruptive. Just, just, Done, as right. you speak. Did we uh, recover the item that dropped? Yes. Good enough. Sorry for the interruption, Mr. Journal. That's, that's fine. <clears throat> Mr. Gonger, were you were you were aware that that um, well? Let me, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Let, let, let's talk about the conversations that you did have with Dr. Murray about Michael Jackson. It, you talked to him. Did you ever talk to Dr. Murray about Michael Jackson's health? Not so much about his health. No. What 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 in particular did you talk to him about? Well, I talked to him about being willing to to get get him whatever he needed. Uh, to do what he had to do. Was it in the in your past history with tours and Michael Jackson's tours, was it unusual to have a doctor available for the tour? No, it was not unusual. Um, when you spoke to Dr. Murray about, well, at the time that you called Dr. Murray to discuss with him the option of him joining the tour, being Michael Jackson's doctor, uh, was that a cold call? The first call, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah. It was, it was a cold call, yes, but I was instructed by Michael to call him. It was Michael Jackson who told you, call Dr. Murray. Yes. And, and uh, you were given the phone number to call Dr. Murray at? Yes. And you called him uh, cold. He didn't know, uh, he wasn't expecting you to call. That's correct. Uh, and you proposed this particular idea that he was to be Michael Jackson's doctor, that that was the idea of the artist. Yes. And um, did you tell him what you thought his services were worth at that time? No. Did you say to him, well, you know, we are prepared perhaps to give a range of this amount? No, I just asked him what he wanted. You basically took a doctor and you asked him right off on the phone, one phone call, uh, what do you want, essentially? Yes, sir. And Dr. Murray at that point said, um, $5 million. That's correct. And that was it. That was a non-starter for you, right? Yes. That was way too much. That's right. In your mind, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, you certainly don't know whether Dr. Murray has ever been a personal doctor for a famous individual on a world tour before, right? Objection, relevance. Do you know whether he's ever Just been? Just I'll overrule the objection if you understand it. You may answer it. I'm not sure I understand well, it, sir. Have you, do, do, did you know Dr. Murray's experience when you called him? Did you no. Know what he, no. Did you know what kind of medicine he was involved in? No. Do you know how many practices he might have had? No. Did you know the value of his practices? No. After you said no, that's a non-starter, Dr. Murray didn't come up with a different figure, did he? No. He didn't then call you on a regular basis and ask you, hey, look, maybe I'll take a little less? In fact, he never called you at all. That's correct. And you just dropped it. That's right. And you let it go. You just you had better things to worry about than hiring a personal doctor. Yes. So, doc, you didn't call Dr. Murray. Dr. Murray didn't call you for weeks, a couple of weeks. That's right. And it was only when Michael Jackson called you through Michael Amir 
that the issue came up again. That's correct. And then when that occurred, that's when you called Dr. Murray again. Yes. Now, when you, you called Dr. Murray, you had a figure in mind of what to offer. Yes. Because Michael Jackson had told you, offer him $150,000. That's correct. Right? So essentially, you were a conduit for that information. Yes. When you told Dr. Murray that you were offering him $150,000 the first time, did you tell him that that was Michael Jackson's offer or AEG's offer? I just told him I was authorized to offer him that amount. Okay. And when you told him that Michael Jackson was offering $150,000, that's when he accepted it? That's correct. Now, you didn't expect at that point Dr. Murray to say, well, wait a minute, that may be too much. How about $40,000? Objection, relevance. Argumentative. Sustained. He, he took it. He took what you offered him. Yes, he did. Do you have any idea what Dr. Murray's practices are worth? Objection, relevance. Cost for speculation. Uh, I'll overrule the objection. You may answer it. No idea. Did you ever have any conversation with Dr. Murray about the value of his practices? No. Objection, asked and answered. Move to Sorry. Speak. Oh, rule. The answer remains. On the second conversation with Dr. Murray, was there some, did you, at that point, did you finally understand what Dr. Murray did for a living, his specialty in medicine? No. You didn't know he was a cardiologist at that time either? At that time, I don't believe I did. $150,000 was offered over 10 months. Is that right? My impression was it was uh, 150000 a month. Uh, but I didn't specify how many months. I didn't know how many months this was going to go. The, the contract was not unlimited. It wasn't for the rest of your life. It was limited in time, was it? I didn't read the final contract, so I don't know what it said. Do you know how long, and we've gone through the schedule of this is it, but I, I didn't really pay attention to when it ended. How long was this, this is it shows were they going to last? Well, we were scheduled through early March, but there were plans to continue. Um, have you had occasion to see this, this uh, completed contract between AEG and Conrad Murray? Have you, have you seen no, it? No, I haven't seen it. Mr. Gonger, um, you were accompanied today by, by your lawyer? That's correct. It's just Objection, kind of. Sustained. 352. Move to strike. Motion to strike is granted, which means that last answer is stricken. It is to be disregarded. Um, are, are you being sued? Objection. Relevance. Sustained. Well, it, it, if, if he is. If Just a moment. I, I, I don't want to hear any uh, arguments. If counsel want to approach, you can approach. You want to approach? Please. Thank you.